another level of collaborative efforts at the ASEAN platform. That means it will be international working. You can be in the Philippines, but you'll be giving consultancy services, Cambodia, for example. And when you do international working there, you have to have intercultural communication and intercultural literacy here. And of course, it is already on. We have to have collaborative online learning and working. When I was a mentor with uh, Ainali ASEAN together with Professor Ria, we work on um, online learning. Um, and I was a mentor with a team. And I have a few of uh, my friends in the Philippines. We work on a team on collaborative learning. And I was I was in Malaysia and I was in New Zealand at that point of time as well. And, and I have um, my team kind of communicating. Uh, so that to me, we have already got that initial introduction to, to collaborative learning amongst the public libraries under INELI at that point of time. Now back to this one again, I would like to, what best can I do if not as a storyteller? Because as a public librarian, one of the things you have to do is to be a good storyteller. Bringing back to the theme, inspire, innovate, collaborate. So let's secure our own mask first. Okay, now, are we ready to future-proof our library staff in order to assist our stakeholders to future-proof our users? That's why I said we have to put on the mask first on ourselves before we can help our users. So how far are we in terms of preparing our staff for this? Here's another um, um, another uh, future ready uh, from future ready organization. I'm borrowing from them. Again, here is another way for us to kind of look into where are the places or the the um, the focus that we put for our staff. This we can use in terms of, are we there in terms of the use of space and time? Designs of collaborative spaces, not just physical spaces, but also our virtual workspace. Mm -hmm. Collaborative leadership, this is actually what we are doing at the moment. At the ASEAN level, we need to have this. Um, I like it in, in, in one of the uh, justification for this conference, just, um, uh, just allow me to read. Um, because um, the main objective of this conference is to showcase libraries in ASEAN for deeper appreciation of our work in our conference, uh, our profession, develop partnerships and collaborations with leading international library organizations to be updated with their advocacies, the library regime trends, including available library opportunities worldwide. And the rest, there's a lot of things. And in the introduction, it says here, um, recognizing the various challenges that public libraries in the region continuously face, such as the lack of strong partnership, networking, collaborations, among others, specifically, there has been no initiative to converge public librarians, library in charge, library staff, and other stakeholders to confer ASEAN libraries, arts, and culture. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is a very appropriate conference for all of us. And this is one of the model that I think we can also look into. When it looks into learner-centered, literacy is one of it. It can be any kind of literacy. And for us at the moment, it's literacy in terms of our digital literacy, as I would like to stress more and more. Mm -hmm. Community partnerships, uh, data and privacy, we need to also understand uh, the data and the levels of privacy that we can work on, professionalized professional learning, personal sorry, personalized professional learning, facilitate professional learning amongst ourselves, robust infrastructure to allow us for digital um, access, curriculums for our training in terms of we curate the digital resources and tools that empower us to become. Um, creators that build instructional partnerships. There's quite a number of stakeholders out there who are very willing to work with the library, not just in terms of training our own staff, but also especially more to improve the quality of life of our users. Now, a lot of people will say budget and resources, um, we don't have enough, it will never be enough. If we wait for resources to be enough to start with something, we will never start. So I think when we leverage on each other, we can stretch and share the budget and the resources that we can and we need for our purposes. Now, I would just share with you, uh, with permission from Sarawak State Library, I'm in no authority to talk about the Sarawak State Library anymore, but I think 
if we want to share a, 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 like a case, it is doable. It has got to be something which is already being done. Okay. Now, we started with a, a People Accessible Network for Digital Empowerment and Inclusivity. The, uh, my apologies if there's some Malay words, I'll, I'll uh, share with you what those Malay words are. And in one way, I would like to also share with you the Malay words so that you can learn another or one or two Malay words for this, during this conference. Now, um, our state is going on a digital um, economy. And um, one of the things that we insisted was that our people has got to be uh, be given awareness, to be, hand, to be handheld uh, in this process because uh, with due respect, um, there are certain areas, uh, pockets of our population who are digital literate, if I may use that word. And connectivity and the internet might not have reached them yet. So in terms of the, um, uh, inf uh, the information infrastructure, uh, it was being done in terms of the connectivity, the, the physical towers and internet connectivity. We, we work with the Sarawak Multimedia Authority. They are the policy makers for that and where they want to put the towers and all that. But the library insisted and put our foot down to say that we have done this for our community and we need the people to be given uh, literacy, hand-holding. So we were being given and being entrusted with that mandate. And then what did we do? At first we did it physical, but we were looking at it, oh, we cannot be covering the whole state in a transformational speed at, at the way that we're going. So we benchmark MOOCs, you know, the massive online um, courses. We benchmark that. So how can we do something like that so that our people can have access to it? Because even, if you have face-to-face, -face, the people will only retain about what? 20% of what you teach them when you are together with them. Mm -hmm. But is there somewhere for them to go back to, a platform for them to refresh and review what they have learned when we went for face-to-face? -face? So we started and we benchmarked MOOCs and we have this online learning platform for our people. You are most welcome to go on and use that online learning platform because it is available for everybody. Now, what did we do and what are the contents in that? Initially, it was mainly for lit, uh, digital literacy for the community. So we have volume um, uh, modules over there. And since we have started it in, in, um, in March 2000, and this was launched just before the, the, the lockdown. And this is where people went to. Uh, if you remember the initial part, we were not allowed to go anywhere. And one of the heart-rending uh, feedback that we received are those for those people who are um, 70 years and above, who are not really savvy with technology, but they want to speak to their children through uh, online learning platform or, or online uh, Zoom. And we, we brought in their comments and put in one module inside there. So there are seven modules altogether in this. We, we provide them with how to use smartphones, how to be secured on that, and how do you uh, find authoritative information, and, and, and plus, um, what are the digital platforms that you can use for meeting, for uh, meeting your family and all that. So that was the initial one. But as one and a half years goes down the line, uh, we put in our Reading Seats program. That, that program is a Reading Seats program for those who have just had babies and we teach them how to start reading to their children. So there are modules in there and not only is it uh, on this open learning platform, but it's also being enhanced by a few other communication channels that the State Library did. They are on YouTube channel, they are on Twitter, they are on IG and they are also on Facebook. Facebook is really, really being heavily used. And then we work together with the Ministry of, um, uh, of um, Tourism because at that point of time, suddenly the tourist guides, the, um, the grab drivers all were not able to, to go for their uh, usual work because it's under lockdown. And that's when they say, why don't we use this time to retrain, reskill, retool our tourist guides, for example? So we worked together with the Ministry of Tourism, Sarawak, and came up with a module for these people to come in. And by 
by what we meant by this is after they finish these sessions, they are they have a certificate to tell them that they have gone through after each module. Yeah. And now, okay, these are the modules that I mentioned earlier on. Um, uh, information management and communication, some basics there, module two, application of government digital initiatives, online businesses and transactions, cybersecurity law and pustaka in the box. Now pustaka in the box is mainly for the teachers where we give them a Raspberry Pi, which we loaded with um, information uh, from the, um, the internet and where they use this, this uh, Raspberry Pi at their school, it's as if they are on the internet, but actually they are offline. Okay, so we have that's the, the module on that one. Okay, and then okay, this is the one that I mentioned about um, the modules for the tourism on uh, tourism awareness, um, a responsible tourism, uh, business events, and um, um, uh, tourism ambassadors for Sarawak. So here are the modules under that. So and this is the uh, module for the reading seeds just now. Uh, the modules, they are about 12 modules uh, based on the age of the baby from um, while the baby is still in the womb until they are about 36 months. And here you can use this and it's open to the public and you can use this on how do you ingrain early reading programs for the, your children and also to be used by the communities and by the community libraries. Now, what next? The next contents we'll be working together with the Ministry of Social uh, uh, Community Wellbeing, Welfare and Women and Childhood Development. This will be issues on teenage pregnancies, on drug addiction, the role of third organizations like the NGOs, uh, on family institutions, environmental sustainability. So here we are collaborating with the ministries and the officers from the ministries and other NGOs to come up with the contents which will be offered on this online learning platform as well. Now, those are just examples uh, in terms of when we did when we did all this innovation during uh, when COVID, I call it COVID induced innovation, because we have to be very creative and we have to be, work cannot stop, service cannot stop. And these are the things that we have to do uh, to kind of um, start the, the ball rolling, even though we are working from home. So how did we do it? Um, as with other people, initially the first week we were in a state of panic because we have a whole year of programs lined up for our uh, users and then suddenly you're not able to do it. What do we do next? Are we just going to stop and just let the world go by? But we can't do that. They would not be doing uh, justice to our existence at working in the library. So we have to adopt fast technology adoption, I call it. And this is where we collaborate with other non-peer organizations. When I call non-peer organizations are not library people, not library organizations. We went to other um, service providers like IT companies, IT, and, and as a lot of armchair research, I may say, and our IT team connected with their IT partners elsewhere as well. And when we were doing this one, we did not have enough, enough time to train the formal train of you train first and then you do this one was you have to do it and we're training on the job kind of thing and we have to relook at our job descriptions from what we are we i mean as librarians we're mostly content organizers but now we have to be the content creators we have to relook at empowering our staff especially they have to work from home and we have to do work group group work from home how do we go about with it we really look at empowering our people, empowering the staff, and at the same time, giving, giving them the guidance. I mean, the leaders will also need their own guidance as well, but we are learning at the same time. And this was where we discovered talents among our colleagues. They are graphic designers, they are voiceover people, and they are people who are willing to go online and um, on a like a TV screen kind of thing. And we discovered that along the way. 
And most importantly, we learn from others. And as a beyond our field, beyond the field of library and information management, we learn from others. We learn from the service industry, for example, when we need to have to plan for our SOP of reopening the library, who did we learn from? Manufacturing organizations, the hotels, for example. And we had we did a lot of community and stakeholders engagement. We have to educate our board members on working online and um, having to have our board meetings online and working with the community that we have promised to have the events with them. We have to have engagement with them as well. I can't say enough about collaboration. We have to collaborate and collaborate because we were not prepared for such an, a, a pandemic. We were not prepared for such a total transformation, a change of our organization. And our collaboration is not just within our organization or peer organization. Our, organi our collaboration goes beyond our organizational borders as well as beyond geographical borders. We were observing what other countries were doing in terms of closing the library services that they do. So we collaborate and we shared what we have done uh, in terms of our innovations during that point of time. Now, um, I'm only being given, uh, okay, another five minutes. Um, when we look at this, back to our conference, back to us where we are now, we look into innovation, we look into um, collaboration, we look for inspiration. Amongst the ASEAN libraries over here, amongst us, I do not have all these total figures, but this is something for us to start to look into, okay? What are the total number of librarians uh, in the whole of ASEAN? What are the total number of public libraries in the whole of ASEAN? And what about academic libraries? What about other libraries? What about our other library advocates or supporters? If we look into this in totality, we have a very strong base for us to be able to work and inspire with each other, collaborate with each other. But at the same time, when we say putting on our masks first, what do we do to ourselves? Training is a big thing. We have to train and retrain and reskill and unlearn uh, some of our fixed ways of doing things be pre-COVID, okay? Now, amongst us, there's a lot of, um, I would say, specialists uh, who can come up with training contents which can be used by those public librarians throughout ASEAN. Oh, and when I say public libraries, it can also be applicable to other libraries as well. Mm -hmm. Can we do this on a MOOCs model, put it on a platform and for us to, to, um, to share with everyone? For your information, um, the uh, Librarians Association of Malaysia, a little bit of advertisement over here, we have a certification course for our uh, para-professional. Um, uh, and that is something like the... Uh, uh, what we call a professional development uh, sort of certificate for them for them to go on another level. So we have been do, um, doing this, and we are again uh, being um, being invited as industry advisors for curriculum development for those who are already in the field who needs for upgrading, for example, mentoring. I like the uh, the. Um, uh, the model by Aineli uh, ASEAN, and I'm I'm still in touch with my group, and we're kind of still mentoring um, uh, each other there. And I am sure we have a lot of leaders uh, throughout ASEAN that can be grouped in as mentors for any groups uh, based on their specialization. Attachment. We have enough numbers of libraries for us to be on attachment. I know it is not possible yet. Uh, while COVID is in, we are not allowed to travel, but we can already start the attachment on a virtual basis, for example. And I'm sure Sarawak State Library would be the first one to be able to, um, to, uh, to accept people who will be on attachment on that basis. Before this, we have, had, we have received people uh, on attachment from uh, Indonesia uh, who came over. Uh, and, and I'm sure this can be something that we can work in the ASEAN framework benchmarking just now. This is one of the marks that we put on for Sarawak State Library when we, we were first 
um, being ordered to close down. What did we do? We quickly did benchmarking on others, as I mentioned just now. And that is part of training as well. Of course, the other important must that we have to put on here is on ICT upgrades. Now, um, a lot of people will say, oh, I would not have enough budget for that. But believe me, out there, there are a number of systems that are also available freely on an open uh, platform, open software platform. And there are also supporters and advocates out there who will be able to support in terms of connectivity. What we did, we talked to the um, national, um, the national uh, telecoms and uh, looking into, I know they are uh, looking at the bottom line, but there are some aspects of things that they can help to kind of assist us, although not one, I'm not 100%, but at least they do give us some kind of discounts. And my mantra is always us, because if you don't ask, you'll never know. And um, the network of ASEAN libraries resources. I remember clearly one of the projects that um, we thought of as a group uh, in our Aneli ASEAN was focusing on mm. sharing of resources for children's literature, children's books, because one of the feedback that we received that books are quite expensive in our region. So we came out with the idea of coming up with a, a resources, a sharing of resources for children's books. Yeah. So in a bigger platform, I am sure we'll be able to share um, our resources and we have a lot of very rich resources. I'm not talking about uh, things that we bought from outside, but we're talking about contents that is about ourselves. I would like to have more on ASEAN contents here that we can collaborate with and we, we can inspire each other, your historical, your cookery, your, your um, beautiful, I was watching the videos just now, my God, the, the biodiversity that you have, have we ever thought about documenting our, um, our medicinal plants uh, uh, locally, for example. And the other thing that we should, we should come on, putting our mask over here, because we have each other to help to help out each other over here. It would be good to have a directory of who's who or the communities of practice for the ASEAN level. Who are the library experts in this region that you can refer to, for example, and we can kind of communicate with each other and share our resources. So these are the must that I think, and in my opinion, and having gone through um, my experience uh, with uh, collaborating with a lot of people, um, these are the things that I think it's almost, I would not say it's free, but we can achieve this at a very low cost. Um, and it's all about putting our minds and our hearts and our, our heads together on this. And this is a good starting point for me. Okay, I think I'm just, um, that's it uh, from me. Um, thank you so much for your attention. You're most welcome to send your uh, questions or any inputs or anything to debate with me on what I put in um, for my keynote today. Um, now, as I said earlier on, I'm giving you a bigger picture on what is going on in the world and how it's been impacting on us. So let's help ourselves first before we help our users. And then from there, amongst ourselves, how do we help each other that's putting on our minds together uh, to come up with an ideal uh, resource sharing to inspire, to, um, to, to innovate and to collaborate with each other. With that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Rashida. You've put forth a lot of uh, inspiring ideas also regarding, um, regarding our topic. And I must agree, just in your first slide, I can't agree more when you mentioned that the value of the library is in the librarians. And it was really uh, an honor working with you at the Aineli ASEAN. We, we, got a, we've, we had very good times at Aineli ASEAN. And I'm actually very happy to see that our innovators in Aineli ASEAN are the ones in the front line. I mean, front yes. line in uh, preparing or organizing activities such as these. So uh, thank you so much, Dr. Rashida. And to all our participants who may have questions to Dr. Rashida, you can email Dr. Rashida your questions. Uh, I'm sure that Dr. Rashida will uh, answer to your queries. 
Okay, so we are all working from home right now and <laughs> um, we are preparing our, you know, a portion of our room just to be an office. Yes, and sometimes, yes. Sometimes you, you just don't realize, you know, one room is converted into an office like right now, I'm just at home, but it yes. seems like, it seems like I'm in the office. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right, so thank you again, Dr. Rashida. Thank, um, that thank was a you, very, Dr. Very Rashida. Good- uh, yes, it was a very, very good presentation. So Thank at you. this point, um, we will award, of course, our certificate of appreciation to our keynote speaker. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. The certificate reads, National Library of the Philippines in partnership with the ASEAN Public Libraries and Information Network and in collaboration with Philippine Librarians Association Incorporated, Librarians Association of Malaysia and the Asia Foundation present this Certificate of Appreciation to Rashida Balhassan, PhD, for being the keynote speaker in the first ASEAN Virtual Regional Conference of Public Librarians with the theme, ASEAN Libraries, Arts and Culture, Inspire, Innovate, and Collaborate, held on August 23 to 25, 2021. Given this 23rd day of August, 2021, via Zoom, signed by the Director of NLP, Cesar Gilbert Q. Adriano, and the President of APLIN, Juan Maslibin Juan Raza. Thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. And I hope to see you anytime virtually. Yes, we would love to see you again, Dr. Rashida. Thank you. Take care also. Take care, everyone. Take care. All right. And at this juncture, we shall have a commemorative photo group photo of all of our participants and our esteemed guests. So may I request everyone to turn on your video. I hope you are a bit prepared for this. (laughs) If you're not comfortable (laughs) turning on your video, that would be okay. So yes, um, you know, this is very important for documentation. So our tech team will tell us if uh, they're ready to take our picture since we are almost 600 participants in Zoom. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will do it uh, page by page, like uh, we will pan one page from another. So (laughs) right now, this is in gallery view. Okay, our tech team will tell me. Okay, just smile. Okay, I don't know what page they are. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Okay. All right, smile. Okay, first slide, smile. One, two, three. Okay, next slide. Second slide. Okay, keep smiling. One, two, three. Wait. Okay. Third slide. Keep smiling. One, two, Okay, our last slide. Last slide. Wait, wait a minute. Okay, smile, last slide. One, two, three. Okay, thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, That was Michael Reno, one of our tech team members. Thank you so much. So once again, thank you so much, Dr. Rashida. Thank you, everyone. See you you virtually again. Yes, see you virtually. (laughs) Bye. 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 It's such an honor to have you. Okay, all right. Um, Yes, now we will hear from our Diamond sponsors. Who made this event possible? We have Odilo, Megatex Philippines Incorporated, and The Greater.
Uh, Mike, we're not hearing any audio. Okay, sorry. Wait. Okay, thank you. Maybe we can start from the beginning. So again, um, we will hear from our Diamond sponsors, Odilo Megatex Philippines Incorporated and the Greater. Welcome to your own unlimited learning ecosystem created by Odilo. Everyone learns differently, and today, more than ever, educators need to provide differentiated and adaptive learning. This personalization should speak to a learner's needs, skills, and interests, and intelligent learning solutions have become a must-have for education institutions. To solve the Blooms to Sigma problem, schools and parents must put the learner at the heart of the technology tools that enable one-on-one -on -one learning. Odilo uses data-driven, artificial intelligence-powered solutions to offer a personalized experience and unlimited learning possibilities. This is what we call an unlimited learning ecosystem. Every institution that works with Odilo uses our integrated technology to create unlimited learning opportunities and to provide intelligent Netflix-style experiences that are tailored to the learner and increase engagement. We have demonstrated impact in improving reading and writing habits by three to five times. We offer unified and frictionless access to more than three million multimedia titles, ebooks, videos, audiobooks, courses, podcasts, magazines, textbooks, newspapers, and more. Over three million titles from the best publishers all around the world, so you have all ebooks and learning resources you need in one place. And thanks to our flexible lending models, families can save up to 90% on buying physical titles with Odilo. Educators can create personalized learning experiences to address individual students' learning gaps by combining the multimedia titles with their own content resources and incorporate assessments at different parts of the learning experience. Odilo gives you the ability to fuse assessments for learning, assessments of learning, and assessments as learning through the learning paths and learning clubs that encourage collaborative and group learning. Our mission is to democratize quality educational content and provide personalized platforms for schools, making sure that every learning journey will become unique with a frictionless user experience. We are trusted by more than 146 million users in more than 40 countries around the world. More than 6,000 institutions already have their own unlimited learning ecosystem. What about you?
University Press Library is a digital library of ebooks for University Press. There are three things that separate UPL from other aggregators partnership, completeness, and individuality. Well, our first consideration is always quality of content. Um, these are top university presses Harvard, Yale, California, Cornell. We buy a lot of this content anyway, so it makes sense to achieve economy of scale by by using end of year money to purchase uh, ebook collections. The completeness of the collections also appealed to us. The fact that, that so few titles are held back compared to selections available from other vendors. And finally, De Gruyter has been wonderful to work with in terms of negotiating prices and license terms and meeting our needs as a library. Okay, thank you once again to our diamond sponsors, namely Odillo, Megatex Philippines Incorporated, and The Greater. Before we move on to our first plenary session, allow me to explain to you some of the mechanics of the conference. To our participants, please mute your microphone so as not to disturb the whole program. Kindly change your name in Zoom for proper identification using the first name, last name, dash, country format. For example, Rhea Apolinario dash, dash, PH. Okay, participants are also advised to key in their questions in the chat box in comment section using the format name of the speaker, dash, and then question. So for example, Emma M. Ray, dash, what is the most challenging part of being a PLY president? Question. Okay, the questions will be consolidated by the other members of the organizing committee to facilitate easier retrieval of queries during the open forum of the plenary session. Likewise, you may also use the raise 
raise hand, no functionality of Zoom, and you shall be acknowledged in proper order. So here in Zoom, you have a button reaction there, and you can use the raise hand option. And you will be acknowledged in proper order. There will also be a daily attendance sheet that participants must fill out, one for the AM session and another for the PM session. This must be accomplished before the day ends. So the link is already posted in the chat box of Zoom and in the comments section of our official Facebook pages, namely the ASEAN VRCPL, Philippine Public Libraries, and the National Library of the Philippines YouTube channel. An evaluation questionnaire will also be administered towards the end of each day of the conference. This must also be accomplished before the day ends. The link will be posted in the chat box of Zoom and in the comments section again of our Facebook pages. To receive your training certificates, you must have filled out the daily attendance sheet and answer the evaluation questionnaire. Training certificates together with other conference materials will be sent to your registered email addresses. Likewise, presentation materials of speakers in PDF, directory of participants, souvenir program, and the journal publication in ASEAN Libraries, Arts and Culture will be made available on or after no, August 25, 2021. Thank you very much. Once again, welcome to the first ASEAN Virtual Regional Conference of Public Librarians with the theme, ASEAN Libraries, Arts and Culture, Inspire, Innovate, and Collaborate, brought to you by the National Library of the Philippines with the ASEAN Public Libraries Information Network as co-host, and in collaboration with the Philippine Librarians Association Incorporated, Librarians Association of Malaysia, and the Asia Foundation. We will now have our plenary session on ASEAN Library Partners. Our first speaker is a graduate of Bachelor of Library Science and Master of Library Science with specialization in archival studies from the Institute of Library Science, now the School of Library and Information Studies, University of the Philippines, Diliman. She first worked as librarian at the Board of Investments, then as documentation officer at the Bureau of Foreign Trade and Economic Information Specialist at the National Economic and Development Authority. In 1989, she changed career and worked as an archivist, then as a director too at the Legislative Archive Service of the House of Representatives. In 2005, she was promoted as the Executive Director of the Congressional Library, a position she held until her retirement in 2018. It was in the House where she got opportunities to train as archivist and join professional groups. She got her first training and experience as archivist or conservator from Dr. David Gracie II, a former state archivist of Texas, and Sebastian de Bruskin, a conservator from Stuttgart, Germany. More training opportunities were open to her in 1992 when she received a one-month basic course on conservation of museum objects at the National Museum of the Philippines, followed by another one-month on audiovisual archiving at the National Film and Sound Archives in Canberra, Australia, under an ASEAN COCI grant in 1995. In 1998, she was a preservation intern for six months at the Department of Conservation and Preservation of Cornell University Library in Ithaca, New York, and another one-month training on safeguarding audiovisual collection in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in 2007. She's an advocate of disaster preparedness in libraries and archives. As an archivist, she was a founding member of the Southeast Asia Pacific Audiovisual Archive Association, became the chair of its education committee, and represented the organization in the task force meeting of the Coordinating Council for Audiovisual Archive Associations on training and professional development at audiovisual archives in London, United Kingdom. As a librarian, she was president of the Philippine Group of Librarians and an advisor to them. Vice president for each of the Association of Parliamentary Librarians in Asia and the Pacific and a part-time faculty at the UP School of Library and Information Studies and the Library and Information Science Department, Verhen Milagrosa University Foundation in San Carlos City, Pangasinan. Everyone, let us all welcome the president of the Philippine Librarians Association Incorporated, Emma M. Ray.
presenting a brief profile of the Philippine Librarians Association Incorporated. The Philippine Librarians Association Incorporated traces its history from the Philippine Library Association established on October 23, 1923 and incorporated on October 3, 1925. The goal was to promote library services and librarianship in the country. Several organizational changes happened later. On September 1, 1973, it assumed the name Philippine Library Association Incorporated, or PLY, integrating all library associations in the country under one umbrella organization, adopting a uniform articles of incorporation and bylaws. This explains the many library associations we have today. The Passage of Republic Act number 6966, known as the Philippine Librarianship Act, on October 20, 1990, necessitated another change in the association's name, since the law does not professionalize libraries but librarians. As such, the association was renamed the Philippine Librarians Association Incorporated, retaining the acronym PLY. Republic Act Number 9246, an act modernizing the practice of librarianship in the Philippines, later repealed Republic Act Number 6966 to further improve the lot of librarians in the country. A series of amendments to the PLY bylaws have been introduced over the years, but I believe such changes are part and parcel of a growing association. Our vision is to build a strong and dynamic association committed to the advancement of the practice of librarianship towards national development. Anchored on this vision, we shall promote the interest and welfare of our members and develop capacities for quality library and information services. The association has the following objectives to oblige all practicing librarians to be duly registered and affiliated with PLY, to undertake programs, projects, and activities that will ensure the growth and development of libraries, librarianship, and librarians in the country, to provide a venue to discuss problems, issues, and concerns affecting the practice of librarianship, the association, and its members, to strengthen linkages with local, national, and international organizations, as well as partnerships with institutions and agencies in the government and private sectors, to undertake research and publications affecting the profession, to conduct regular continuing professional development activities for its members. We are governed by a National Board of Trustees, who are elected for a term of two years by the members of the House of Delegates during an annual convention. The House of Delegates is composed of three representatives from 17 regional councils under PLY. The regional councils represent the administrative divisions of the Philippines. The officers of the National Board of Trustees are President, Executive Vice President, three vice presidents representing the zone, Visayas and Mindanao, secretary, treasurer, auditor, and the public relations officer. The presidents of the regional councils who are not elected as officers sit as members of the National Board of Trustees. Today, the Philippine Librarians Association Incorporated is an integrated national association of librarians and we are the accredited integrated professional organization recognized by the Professional Regulation Commission or the PRC. We are one of the 43 government regulated professions by the PRC through our Professional Regulatory Board for Librarians. So a would-be librarian shall have to pass the librarian licensure examination first be certified as a registered librarian and issued a professional identification card before 
earning the right to practice librarianship in the Philippines. After taking their oath as professionals, librarians are also sworn in as members of CLI. In short, all registered librarians shall be integrated under a single organization recognized and accredited by the board and approved by the commission. A librarian duly registered and licensed shall automatically become a member of PLY and shall receive the benefits and privileges appurtenant thereto upon payment of the required fees and dues. Membership in PLY shall not be a bar to membership in other association of librarians. Our librarians can also be members of specialty associations depending on their employment and interest. Such associations are Philippine Association of Academic Research Librarians Incorporated, Philippine Association of School Librarians Incorporated, Association of Librarians in the Public Sector, Association of Special Libraries of the Philippines, Medical and Health Librarians Association of the Philippines, Philippine Group of Law Librarians, Philippine Theological Librarians Association, Society of Filipino Archivists, etc. These associations have their own constitution and bylaws, securities and exchange commission registration, and set of officers, programs, and activities. By the way, as of October 2019, we have 9,976 registered librarians in our roster, and as of January 2019, only 6,697 are active. We will be 98 years old this year, and we are looking forward to our centennial celebration in 2023. We are older than IFLA by five years, and we were one of the first library associations from outside Europe and the United States, along with China, India, Japan, and Mexico, to join the IFLA family. About PLY programs, five years ago, we conducted the first librarian summit to address the welfare of our librarians. In that summit, representatives from concerned government agencies and other entities were invited to be part of the discussions on specific issues concerning our members. Thereafter, the collective body was encouraged to identify solutions and recommendations that resulted in the PLY crafted 10 point agenda covering the following amendments to RA 9246, establishment and re operationalization of public libraries and barangay reading centers promotion and improvement of programs and services for LIS education, accreditation of libraries to ensure quality resources and services, formulation of a professional development agenda, development of strategies to conduct research, standardization of rank and promotion criteria, as well as the upgrading of position and benefits for librarians, Increasing awareness of librarians on, on their accountability, increasing the number of professional licensed librarians and promotion of the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development by and among librarians and libraries nationwide. Over and above the administrative and regular activities, programs and projects, we are so guided by this 10-point agenda and a new initiative, a new initiative by PLY in partnership with the PRC Professional Regulatory Board for Librarians with the first Southeast Asian Librarians Leadership Convergence we conducted last November 11 of last year. The convergence had the following objectives to gather the leaders of the different library associations, representatives from national libraries and academe in the Southeast Asian region to conduct or to look into the library and information science education and practice such as examination, 
ethics, continuing professional development, including career progression and specialization, to find commonalities of education and practice, identify gaps and come up with recommendations to bridge the gaps and to discuss on how to go about identifying and establishing the mutual recognition of professional qualifications that will lead to expression of intent and or signing of MRPQ Memorandum of Understanding among ASEAN countries. The convergence produced a plan of action and a manifesto of support endorsed by interested parties from which we will be moving towards a mutual recognition arrangement for ASEAN librarians as envisioned by the ASEAN economic community. Maybe some of you are aware of this initiative for ASEAN librarians. There will be part two of the convergence to be held this year on November 10 to 12. And I hope some of you, if not all of you can join us. The invitation is always open for those interested to participate. And of course, our annual Ply Congress, which for the second time will be held online. We have gathered almost 3,000 participants in our first online Congress last year. And before the pandemic, we have been having foreign librarians in attendance, including ASEAN librarians. So I am inviting everyone in advance to attend our Ply Congress free of charge on November 24 to 27 of this year. That's all for Ply. Happy and proud to serve Filipino librarians. Mabuhay and congratulations to Aplin and the organizing committee of this conference. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma'am Emma Ray, our FLY president, who, even if she's retired from work, is still serving the association. Thank you so much, Ma'am Emma. So if you have questions to all our participants, if you have questions, please type in your questions at the chat box with the format, the name of the speaker, dash, then your question. Okay, our... our uh, Moderator, some of our moderators working uh, for the committee will consolidate them and will ask the speakers later your questions. Okay, so thank you again, uh, Ma'am Emma. Our next speaker is one Mazli Bin Juan Razali. He is the head of ICT sector, chief information officer, and certified integrity officer at Sarawak State Library. He currently holds the following positions. Standing Committee Member, Management and Marketing Section, IFLA 2021-2025. President, ASEAN Public Library Information Network or APLIN 2020-2022. Secretary General, Librarians Association of Malaysia 2020-2022. Secretary General, Association of Certified Integrity Officers, Sarawak. 2021 to 2024. Juan Mazli has presented papers in Malaysia, such as the ASEAN webinar series, Regional INELIS, and in international conferences, such as the 73rd IFLA last August 2007 in Durban, South Africa, and the 84th IFLA last August 2018. He managed various ICT projects for Sarawak State Library as well as rural libraries in Sarawak. He represented Malaysia to the International Network of Emerging Library Innovators, or INELI, for 2015 to 2017. Juan Masli has been actively involved in community projects to provide IT for information access and learning to the rural community in Sarawak. Example, Kembara Limu, an outreach program for information literacy in the rural community. He initiated the Makerspace and Maker programs at Sarawak State Library in 2016. Everyone, to talk about the ASEAN Public Libraries Information Network or APLIN, we have the president himself, Juan Masli Bin Juan Razali. Thank you, Dr. Ria. Uh, allow me to share my slides. Mm. 
Assalamualaikum and good morning, good afternoon everyone. This training in Kuching Sarawak. Thank you for being part of the first ASEAN Virtual Regional Conference of Public Librarians. Uh, teams ASEAN uh, Libraries, Arts and Culture, Inspire, Innovate and Collaborate. The INLI ASEAN project was conceptualized by the National Library of the Philippines uh, in collaboration with the Global Libraries Initiative of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to respond to the various issues and challenges that the public libraries in the ASEAN region continue, continuously face, such as the lack of strong partnerships and collaborations among them and the lack of common and practical platform to enable easy access to vital information and conducive venues for relevant knowledge and information exchange. So therefore, in the first Ilali ASEAN convening, held in October 2015. In principle, we meet in the series of convening because of we, as the innovators from ASEAN countries, realize that the need for public libraries in the ASEAN region to create strong partnership and collaborations among them, and the need for a common and practical platform and conducive venue to enable easy access to vital information and relevant knowledge and information exchange. We also want to emphasize the needs for every innovators to promote and adhere to the principle of mutual respect and trust among us librarians or innovators, a good relationships and active involvement in this network and to act on the basis of inclusive inclusive participation and shared responsibilities among us. The innovators representing 11 ASEAN countries with the commitment and participation are to ensure that we put full dedications to strengthen networking, collaborations, and partnership in public libraries in the, in the Southeast Asia regions through various and innovative program and activities and the provision of a platform and venue for easy access to information and facilitation of knowledge and information exchange. We put our commitment to utilize our capabilities expertise and resources to mutually advance networking and collaboration of public librarians in libraries in this region to meet this objective which align with by ASEAN uh, in early ASEAN objective and continuously continuously work to achieve this objective we establish the uh, which was established in early ASEAN through uplink So the ASEAN Public Libraries Information Network, or in short, APLIN is the core goal of INLI ASEAN. So APLIN is envisioned to be a network, information hub, and a common and practical platform for public libraries in Southeast Asia and beyond to connect with each other. It is a mechanism that will create future collaborations and partnership among stakeholders in this region. So the foundation of Aplin lies on the very nature of what the Inerly ASEAN projects aim to achieve. As the, the Inerly ASEAN objective that I presented earlier, the Aplin endeavor to continue with in the ASEAN attain through the creative of a network, creation of a network, information hub, and a platform 
for public libraries in this region can connect and help each other. So we, the members of the IPLIN, agreed to the following objectives. To build capability and promote professional development, cooperation, collaborations, and partnership among public librarians in this region. To create a network of library innovators and decision makers to propel and accelerate public library development in the context of ASEAN, ASEAN community. To provide a venue for intellectual discussions and exchange on relevant issues affecting public libraries and national libraries in the regions. And provide a venue for sharing of resources, best practices among public libraries and national libraries in this region and develop exchange among national libraries in the region and create projects and activities to improve public library development in the region. And lastly, to coordinate, co collaborate, and partner with national libraries in this region and beyond, and other libraries, library association and networks who share similar subject or similar advocacies. As such, Further collaboration, identification, and sustainability of practical development strategies on how the members' countries can leverage on the strength and potential available within APLIN. The APLIN organizational structure is comprises of four components, the secretariat, the executive board, the council, and the founding members. So the Anneli ASEAN innovators of the Anneli ASEAN project serve as the founding members of APLIN. The sponsors, which is the, the national libraries for these ASEAN countries serve as the council of the APLIN. So the Anneli ASEAN sponsors, which is Anneli ASEAN uh, uh, APLIN council shall nominate one innovator for their country to be in the APLIN executive board. The nominated representative from each of the Kinali ASEAN countries shall elect among themselves the officer for the executive board. The applicant shall be composed of the executive board, council, secretariat, the founding members, and the general members. So this is the picture of the first elected executive board of APLIN, which was held in the National Library of Indonesia, Jakarta, back in uh, April 2017. The executive board was uh, led by uh, Madam Lesila Velasco as, as the first president for 2017 to 2019. And I take over from her in 2020 until 2022. Applin membership. So at the moment, the membership is free and open to those who work in the library, a librarian or non librarians, uh, those who are willing to share the, the best practices in innovative services in ASEAN region. There's no age limit uh, for this membership. So currently, the executive board is working on finalizing the requirement, criteria, policies, implementing rules and regulation, and type of general membership. So once ready, a plane uh, shall be open to the public libraries, librarians, and information professionals, and stakeholders in Southeast Asia who share the same objective of propelling and accelerating the development of public libraries in the ASEAN community. The membership of APLIN of other public librarians in the region is, for the network, is foremost goal of being an information hub and platform for public libraries in South, Southeast Asia to connect. So type of uh, general memberships. So there's individual memberships. This is a regular membership. 
open to public librarians or librarians and information professional in general in Southeast Asian region. Membership is free at the moment. And then the associate uh, membership, associate membership, this type of membership is open to friends of libraries or those who are not employed in the library or information centers, but share the same course and supporting uplift. And then there's institutional membership. This type of membership is open to public libraries and national libraries, librarian associations in the Southeast ASEAN region. So for this institutional membership, entitled three slot with special rate to attend event organized by Aplin. If we, if we organize event, uh, if Aplin organize a paid uh, conference, for example. And there's a corporate membership. This corporate membership is open to an institutions, companies, corporations that share the same cost of Aplin. And the, the corporate members are entitled for three slots in the general memberships and with special rate to attend event organized by Aplin. So currently, there are 31 members of Aplin, which is among the innovators from the Anneli ASEAN 2015 and 2017. So these are the past and present um, collaborative programs. Uh, on the 8th of uh, April, 2021, we are working together to host the webinar series on regional analysts sharing innovation ideas and inspiration with the National Library of the Philippines. And today until the 25th, we are co-host this, the first ASEAN virtual conference of public librarian with National Libraries of the Philippines. So, And for the future uh, uh, programs, we are going to be the host for the second ASEAN Virtual Regional Conference of Public Librarians 2022. So APLIN is the mechanism to create future collaborations of stakeholders in the region. Currently, uh, we don't have a final resource, uh, financial resources yet, but we are targeting that uh, once registered, the uh, APLIN will uh, possibly institutionalize the inclusion in the annual budget of the national libraries or public libraries or from our annual fee and a provision to sustain the objective and the, of the project and its activities. Other fees can be come from conferences, training, seminars, workshop and others that we uh, plan to organize. So Aplin conducted several online meetings among us and then we implemented some programs uh, as, as I mentioned earlier. So before I end my presentation, this is my last uh, slide. So to conclude, Aplin's vision and aims required concerted efforts and continuous support to sustain the participations of all public librarians and support from national libraries and librarian association in Southeast Asia is the critical factor to assure the success of Aplin. I really hope we can establish a culture of inspire our fellow public librarians to do great for this profession, people, and our country. Continuously innovate and face the challenges and solve problems and collaborate to create opportunities for future collaborations and partnership in this Southeast Asia region. So working together is vital because if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, we go together. Let's work together for the future. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening and stay safe. Back to you, Dr. Ria. Hello, thank you so much, Mazdi. It's nice to see you again. And I'm very happy that you're taking on the presidency of Aplin. 
good luck on your presidency, Masli. I know um, with you at the helm, along with the other innovators that you have there in Applin, you'll go a long, long way. So congratulations, and we wish you all the best. Okay, all right. So if you have questions again to our dear participants, please type in your questions in our chat box. Write in the quest, uh, write in the name to whom the question is addressed to, the name of the speaker, dash, and then your question. Okay, so um, our next speaker is a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, major in accounting at the Fiati University. She was enrolled in Bachelor of Education, major in library science at the University of Manila with 18 units and post-baccalaureate in library and information science at the Polytechnic University of the Philippines and at the Trinity University of Asia and finished 36 units in Master in Management and graduated with the degree of Master in Public Administration at the Lyceum Northwestern University, Dagupan, in 2017. She is employed at the Quezon City Public Library and has been working there for 39 years and currently holding a Librarian 5 position, handling the Library Extension Division and the OIC Assistant City Librarian at the Quezon City Public Library. She supervises the publication of the official newsletter of the library, the Quezonian, and also done research on QC local history that were published, such as the QC milestones that shaped a great city, the History of QC Barangays, Journeys to the Early Beginnings of the History of QC Barangays, and Compilation of the Lessons and Legacies of Selected Privileged Speeches of Mayor Herbert M. Bautista as member of the City Council, and Lessons and Legacies, 50 Selected Speeches, again, of Mayor Herbert M. Bautista. She also supervises the Facebook page of the Quezon City Public Library and monitors and approves the posting of all online and virtual activities of the main library and its branch libraries. She is also currently the president of the Association of Librarians in the Public Sector or ALPS and a member of PLY. Let us all welcome Lucila Raquino. Good afternoon. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Association of Librarians from the public sector. The role of library association is very vital in the promotion of library, librarianship as a profession. The Association of Librarians in the Public Sector, ALS, a non-stock, non-profit organization, was incorporated to accomplish certain goals and purposes. To empower the public library profession in the development and promotion of library services and leading the advocacies 
cooperation and networking among public librarians and libraries of the country. The association commits to accomplish goals, effect change, and possibly influence the policy or lawmaking body for enactment or amendments of laws for the betterment of the public libraries and library profession, and also by providing a model that could create an environment or climate of library innovation, creativity, and collaboration. The association is a non-stagnant profit organization with uh, the following, uh, following objectives or, or goals. To promote effective library services throughout the country, to uphold the dignity of the library profession, to work for the professional advancement and material welfare of its members, to seek the support of government officials and the general public, for the members of a community to educate themselves continuously and enrich their personal lives. Uh, the name of the association has been changed at three times. The ABS was named, formerly named Public Librarians Association of the Philippines, or PAP. Then it was changed to Philippine Public Librarians League Incorporated, or the PPLLI. And in 2011, its officers then renamed the association Association of Librarians in the Public Sector Incorporated or PIMAS. Uh, the ABS membership or the Association of Librarians in the Public Sector's membership are professional librarians or the paraprofessionals provided that they are working in the public sector or in the government. The association is composed of 11 board of directors who vote from among themselves the president, the vice president, secretary, treasurer, the auditor, and the PR. Okay. The uh, before the pandemic, the ads usually conducted annual convention and persists in partnership with the National Library of the Philippines. Okay. Uh, Ma'am Lucila, yes, Ma'am Lucila, may we have a check of your uh, audio because from our end, it's uh, it's not as loud. <laughs> There's a ground and echo from our end. Um, can we check your audio again? Okay, hello. Hi. Hello, ma'am. Okay, it's, it's, yeah, we can hear you, ma'am, but it's not as clear. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can, uh, yeah, maybe we can, you can remove your earphones. Yes, yes ma'am. Is it okay now? Yeah. Yeah, it's better. It's better, ma'am. So, yeah, maybe you can talk nearer the, the microphone, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Paul. Okay, thank you also. We have some ops activities here. Before the pandemic, uh, as I've said, we have conducted, uh, we are conducting or we were conducting annual conventions, of course, always in partnership with the National Library of the Philippines. And we also conduct at least one or two seminar workshops in a year. Then uh, this pandemic changed everything. Due to challenges uh, libraries faced during the pandemic, the annual convention last year was not conducted. And also meet meetings of officers were done uh, virtually, no more face-to-face. -face. And we had the first webinar, which was conducted in partnership with the National Library of the Philippines, entitled Where Thou Art, 
the present situation and future direction of the Philippine Public Libraries, which was conducted last June 22, 2021. Uh, one of the activities of ARPS was also that we were involved as a committee member in the drafting of uh, career progression specialization or the CPS program for public librarians. Also, uh, one of our uh, proposed uh, activity is that uh, the standard position of public libraries in the local uh, government, whether under the executive or the legislative, because as of now, most of our uh, public librarians are well are under the executive, but others are still under the legislative, and others are under the PIO or the Public Information Office of the local government. So we propose that uh, public libraries be under one uh, exec. It's either the executive or legislative, but uh, we propose to be under the executive. Hopefully, we are working for this. And number two is the a possible departmentalization of public libraries in the government unit wherein uh, our city librarians will be uh, higher, grade level higher than the present, which is, uh, I think it's librarian four. But uh, in the departmentalization, they will be classified at the, as department heads also. Hopefully, this will materialize in the future, not within our uh, this um, officers, but even after our time. So the challenges encountered for the past years, as I have said, the, the association conduct, conducted uh, its annual general assembly by organizing convention for public librarians which were conducted in the, the different parts of the country. But then the pandemic affected the country on March last year, 2020, that prevented the conduct of uh, our general uh, assembly, supposedly to be conducted in Alaminos, Pangasinan, but was not, uh, did not materialize. Uh, so now we are, because libraries are prohibited, to open no? so we also conducted a regular meetings but now it's regular uh, more on uh, virtual meetings so no more face-to-face -face meetings so library buildings were closed so that resulted to some maybe anxiety and depression part of the librarians and because uh, librarians libraries are closed that's why and, and uh, of course, the problem of connectivity, the internet in, the, in other parts of the country is alone. So that prevented us from having our regular meetings. So how did we address these challenges as, as the Association of Public Librarians? So uh, we, we intensified, of course, the partnership and collaboration most of all to the National Library of the Philippines, the PLD or the Public Libraries Division, particularly, who is also in charge with the public libraries in the country. So we had partnership. And up to now, we have, we are, we also, we have regular partnership in the conduct of these webinars and uh, workshops. So we have, we conducted the uh, online and virtual meetings and during this pandemic, we have the support of the officers and uh, members, particularly emotional support, or if needed, financial. So the payment of annual dues are waived for the members, but uh, we still uh, membership is still open. To end this uh, presentation, I would like to say that amidst the pandemic, 
the Association of Librarians in the Public Sector Incorporated or ALPS will continue to serve the members true to its goals and purposes, to empower the librarian profession and to effect change for the betterment of public librarians and libraries in the country. And uh, I would like to quote from our David Lankes. If you want a future of libraries, it is within you. The librarians, if you want to know this, that seeks out knowledge and seeks informed conversation, the ad then advocate for it beyond your walls. Thank you and uh, stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma'am Lucila Rakino, the president of ALPS. You know, it's really hard navigating in this pandemic, especially heading a, an association. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so thank you so much for your hard work, Ma'am Lucila. And our last speaker for this afternoon's plenary session will talk about the Librarians Association of Malaysia. Dr. Maud Faisal Hamza is currently working as a senior librarian at the University of Malaya or UM. He's also a part-time lecturer at the same university. His education began in 2006, where he completed his Diploma in Information Management at University Technology Mara or UITM. He later pursued his bachelor's and master's degrees at the same university in the year 2008 and 2011, respectively. In 2019, he managed to graduate on time, or GOT, for his Doctor of Philosophy, where he specialized in information management, specifically on work design and work performance. Having more than 12 years of experience and with more than 30 article publications in the field of library science and information management, Dr. Faisal has been conferred numerous awards. One of the most prestigious awards that he received was the Malaysia Aspiring Librarian Award in 2015. Due to his excellent achievements, he has been appointed as the Vice President 2 for Malaysian Librarian Association, the Chairman for Special Disabled Users in Library, and the Chairman for Kuala Lumpur World Book Capital 2020. Everyone, let us all welcome Dr. Maud Faisal Hamza. All right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillah. Thank you, Ria, for the uh, introduction. Uh, I hope, uh, ladies and gentlemen, all the participants will stay with me until the end of the um, uh, my slide presentations. Okay, I will try my best to present uh, in short and sweet. Okay, <laughs> all right. So uh, this uh, for this sh uh, sharing session, I uh, will focus on these uh, Liberian Association of Malaysia, which is on the revolutionizing of uh, the LAM itself. So to keep it my presentations um, uh, in line with the time given, uh, I will start with the introductions, okay? And then the LAM revolutionization, which is the transformations of the LAM itself. And then uh, this is the juice of my presentation, actually, the potential collaboration that we are looking forward. Uh, we are opening our door to any uh, potential collaboration, local and international agency or organizations. Uh, with LAM, and then I will uh, end my presentation with uh, future collaboration short conclusions. Okay, so I will start my presentation with uh, quoting from uh, quotes from Helen Keller. Alone, we can do so much little. Together, we can do so do so much. So with these quotes, this is the theme of the presentation. This is the theme of my presentation actually. So we are looking forward a collaboration uh, between LAM and any uh, potential uh, researcher, any librarians and in any categories of libraries to work together to improve our profession in Asians, okay? So as for the introduction, uh, let's start with the uh, history of LAM, okay? Previously, LAM was set up as Malayan uh, Library Group, MLG, back in 1955. 
the initial idea of LAM is to uh, to develop a library associations or group covering Malaya during that time we call Malaysia as Malaya and Singapore librarians okay as for now um, Malayan library group uh, has been uh, known as Satuan uh, Pustakawan Malaysia in Malay language and uh, LAM so uh, we have uh, as a leading uh, organization as a leading association for librarians we playing our rules to make sure uh, all activities, all uh, issues in libraries are uh, covered by uh, our society, our associations. Okay, and then we provide as uh, we provide one-stop center training, uh, make policies, and etc. Okay, so uh, yeah, as a leading association for librarians, LAM playing an important role to provide training again to develop uh, several policies. And we are looking forward to potential research collaboration, especially on certain certain areas in library field, especially on evidence base, on uh, IT, okay? And uh, so many field that we need to explore, especially for future skill for librarians, okay? So, all right. All right. So uh, as for the vision uh, to be leader of excellence in development, promotion and support of Malaysian uh, librarians and information professional and institution in global knowledge industry. OK, as a one stop, as a as a leader association for Malaysian librarians, we really hope that we are be able to be leader in excellence in developments, especially uh, to make sure the profession as librarians in Malaysia uh, as part, as same level with others profession, for example, architect or doctors in Malaysia. All right. So we are trying our best to make sure we can uh, be a proactive associations to provide uh, more information, uh, more skill, more training for our librarians, especially in Malaysia. As for now, we have more than 2,600 uh, members registered as our members in Malaysia. So as this um, number is quite, quite big, and uh, it, with these numbers, we are looking forward uh, potential collaborations. Again, research, any MOUs, okay, any knowledge transfer, technology transfer, or even uh, deeper networking among librarians uh, and libraries in all categories of libraries. Okay, so um, I'll be posting with the LAM committees. Okay, this is such uh, this is uh, uh, introduction of uh, what we have, what committee we have in uh, LAM. Okay, the first one is a public library standing committee. So yeah, most of the participants is from public library, uh, and then. Um, Academic Library Standing Committee. We have also a special standing committee, special library standing committee. Uh, in Malaysia, we categorize this for uh, companies, private companies, uh, libraries, uh, all NGOs, libraries, or personal libraries. We categorize as uh, special libraries, special library. All right. And then we also have School Resource Center Standing Committee. So we also cater a uh, school library. The, the the school library in uh, in private and also in government sector okay and then we have intellectual property committee we have law library group committee uh, we have uh, professional developments committee uh, most of the training conducted uh, uh, via this professional development committee it's based on uh, leaderships um, and then we have uh, competency uh, trainings, okay? And then we have promotion and membership com uh, committees, publication committees, okay? So LM do have a publication. We do have a PPM journal. So feel free if you want to uh, contribute, uh, if you want to write a paper, you can uh, publish in our journal also. Feel free to email us for to know more about uh, the publication, okay? And then uh, we have information technology committee. So this committee is truly uh, 
using technology as um, as their uh, as their trainings as a uh, training provider and uh, they help us in doing any webinars online or digital initiative okay uh, we also have standing committee uh, committee on library service and special group it's under me actually so LM is very committed towards uh, information needs uh, by disabled user. So by having this uh, standing committee, we are trying our best to explore, to study the needs of uh, disabled user. So uh, we have quite a number of categories of uh, disabled users. So we really hope that uh, this standing committee can uh, really explore and helps librarians to serve better information provider to uh, those categories of user. Uh, and then uh, we also have medical uh, library committee. So um, um, most of uh, uh, we do have a librarians working in hospital also. So uh, those uh, librarians will categorize under librarians uh, medical library committee. And then uh, we have Islamic uh, Library Committee, and we have PPM Award and Prizes uh, Subcommittee, and we also have Training Subcommittee. And the last three committee that LIM has is a Research Committee. It's a new committee, actually. We are trying our best to promote a research culture among uh, our librarians. So we need our librarians to write. We encourage our librarian to write. Uh, to uh, publish paper in journal, to be able to understand the research flow, so we are be able to serve a researcher in any uh, libraries, uh, in public libraries or academic libraries. Okay, and uh, to support SDG, we also have social and community uh, service subcommittees. Okay, and then uh, the last one is the internationalization subcommittee. Right, with uh, all this committee, we are really looking forward any potential collaboration that uh, might suit, suit with your, um, your interests, okay? The next uh, is, uh, the next slide is uh, uh, the transformations of LM. okay? The transformation of LM is not one day job, it takes years and planning and commitment, all right? So, um, yeah, um, we are trying, the, the current elected uh, committees are trying our best to make sure we transform uh, LM to keep it uh, LM stay relevant among the members. So we are trying our best to uh, make sure LM visible by, um, by, in, by doing a proper digital marketing, by rebranding the LM itself, and uh, we do content management uh, in our social media. Taking advantage of the benefit of and the impact of the social media, we are trying best. We are trying our best to make sure uh, we are be able to engage with all categories of libraries and users in our social media, especially in response to uh, COVID nineteen. All right. So uh, the next transformation is the involvement of uh, young librarians. Young librarians manage to become council members and chairman of the committee. It's a, it's a brief movement to, in, to, to allow young librarians uh, to be one of the top uh, position as a, a council member and chairman of the committee. This will ensure the check and balance in our society. All right, this, is, this will ensure the check and balance. So uh, this will ensure also the we will keep the we will be able to stay relevant uh, with the latest information with the, with the latest uh, trends in information needs okay uh, for example in malaysia there is a movement of uh, tiktok so i believe with the with this uh, movement, the involvement of young librarians in our society, uh, it will ensure that the society will understand the needs or the latest trend of uh, information repackaging or information delivery in the society, among the society, All right? The last one is the content analysis on uh, demand, a uh, content analysis and on demand training. It is very important to respond to the new trend 
of uh, the technologies uh, respond to the new trends of uh, communication. So we did a content analysis and on-demand trainings. Um, so we make sure we analyze all the content management available in our social media and any platform, digital platform, to make sure we can uh, we be able to uh, to measure the impact of each of the event. Okay. All right. Uh, the next uh, slide is on the response to COVID nineteen. Yeah, COVID nineteen has changed us in many ways. Librarians need to be more proactive, more creative in delivering information, especially during the pandemic. So LAM is taking uh, responsibility to make sure we provide a guideline on the library reopening. All right, and then there is a series of webinars and online training that we conduct to make sure our librarians are not. Uh, our librarians are be able to be proactive during the pandemic, right? So this is some of the uh, this is the guideline on the library reopening um, uh, proposed by Medical Library Group (MLG). So, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can you guys can um, scan the QR code to download the uh, guideline on the library reopening in Malaysia. Okay. And then uh, we conduct a series of webinars. This is some of the webinars that we conduct since last year to respond to the COVID-19, right? And then online training on uh, writing and uh, research Monday. We also conduct a training to, uh, regarding on EndNotes, turning in, okay? And then uh, online training on uh, research, uh, for example, this uh, from a research committee, uh, research, but I am a librarian, the relevance to conduct a research, to, con to, do a, to write a paper among a librarians, okay? We also conduct a, a, a trial on training on copyright law, okay? It's a series of intellectual property talk series, okay? We also, call, uh, uh, we also join Kuala Lumpur World Book Capital 2020 series of webinars. We conduct various of webinar. We engage with our users, we engage with our stakeholder to make sure our webinars, it's relevant to it and it's needed by our stakeholder. Okay. And then we also conduct an online competition. This is some of the online competition that we create to make sure we, we still engage with our librarians and our users. Okay. It's most of our competition is open to public. Okay. For example, read and read, snap and win. Uh, poster design competition, amateur comp uh, photographer competition, book, ebook, hunt, all right? Next, uh, this is some of the example of the pictures from taken from the uh, uh, amateur photographer competition, okay? And then we also not forget about the academic um, academicians. So we do uh, academic engagement. We um, collaborate with the faculty of information management to make sure uh, we will be able to do a webinar series related on research qualitative, quantitative planning for research among librarians, okay? And then a series of intellectual property talk series, okay? This is among the most uh, active um, committee, intellectual uh, property, uh, intellectual property committees, okay? We talk about the copyright, the TCs, and then the national libraries, copyright, okay? And then we also uh, do e EBM, uh, information literacy training, and uh, engagement with school library. And then we also provide a PPM grant offer for IFLA WLIC 2020 last week. So, uh, our members are uh, be able to join uh, IFLA online. So uh, we give grant for them, all right? So uh, as for my uh, third uh, part of my presentation is potential collaborations, okay? So as I mentioned earlier, LM is open to any collaboration, especially uh, with all uh, categories of users categories of research libraries and librarians. It can be from public libraries, school libraries, or even personal um, private libraries, okay? So the first collab potential collaboration that we are looking forward to is joint conference. 
So LIM is looking forward to any potential collaboration um, with local and international organization and agency. So one of the highlight from previous um, conference that uh, LM involved was during F uh, IFLA KLWBC 2018. And the current uh, collaboration joint conference is between LAM and University of Malaysia Kelantan, uh, which is Malaysian Library Annual Conference 2021. And LAM and Librarians Association of Singapore, LAS PPM Joint Conference 2021. Okay. So we are still uh, looking for, uh, we are still looking a uh, call for particip uh, participants. So you guys can join our conference. It will be held on October, okay? And then the second collaboration is knowledge and technology transfer, okay? So uh, knowledge and technology transfer can be in the form of online and on-site training among uh, librarians in Asia. So uh, we also can have a student exchange lecturer invited professors, librarians attachments. Okay, this is very important to have a librarian attachment. And uh, it can be in the form of MOU between LM and others uh, institutions also. So by having knowledge and uh, technology transfer, we are be able to improve our professions. Okay, next is called a Marrakesh Treaty. So as uh, Marrakesh Treaty is one of uh, our highlight, Malaysian are preparing to sign this Marrakesh Treaty of end of this year. So LM are looking forward any potential collaboration among Marrakesh Treaty's members in Asia. Okay, the Marrakesh Treaty members in Asia. So we are looking forward a collaboration on the best practice on how to do a digitization, the OCR issues, service and facilities for blind uh, user, okay? So with this, uh, Marrakesh Treaty is one of uh, our, uh, well, it's a collaboration for LM uh, with others uh, outside. Next, it's uh, digital information technology, digital, digital information management. Okay, so the digitization process involves various issues such as the quality of the digitization, copyright, the accessibility, the retrieval itself, and it's also in the form of uh, storage, server, cloud system, and many more. So by looking from the bright side, those uh, issues can be a potential collaboration between LM and others. Meaning to say we can have we can have a training session, we can have a collaboration, we can have a, a conference on digital information management, on heritage capture. Uh, it can be in any form of uh, IT field or topic. Okay. So uh, LM are looking forward on digital information management collaboration with all uh, agency and um, organizations. Um, outside the Malaysia. The last collaboration is Future Skill Research Hub. LM is looking forward to collaboration on research related to future skill uh, that librarians need to develop. It is very important that we be able to be a center to make sure we provide a training, a policy, or even a guideline for uh, Asian librarians, especially for future skill uh, librarians. It is very important to make sure our profession are still relevant, are still um, real relevant. Uh, we need to embark with all the latest technologies, latest trend to make sure we are be able to play our rules as a librarians. Yeah, Google can help our users to search for the information, but the librarians will help our user to search in effective ways, okay? So this collaboration, this future skill research hubs will help with benefit all librarians in Asia, okay? And yeah, again, uh, we are trying our best to adapt the changing um, and response to any letters, internal and external factor to make sure we, we be able to play our rules, we be able to give our users information, our users uh, information needs. So 
you can email me if you have any uh, potential collaboration between your organization and LAM. Okay. As a conclusion, working as a professional librarian requires holistic competency responding to the internal and external factor. The pandemic has shown us that we need to stay flexible. We need to lose a bit. We need to be proactive, responsive towards the needs of our, our user. We need to be, uh, we need to move forward and then learn new skills, learn new technologies to make sure we are be able to run library digitally, all right? Uh, the word new norm is, I believe it's not uh, suitable for librarians because we are uh, transforming our librarian hybrid and digitally. So we should be able to respond to any internal and external factor around us, okay? Therefore, as a professional entity, LIM are playing important roles to provide comprehensive training, consultations, guidelines, formulation, librarians. And we are looking forward to uh, any potential collaboration uh, with uh, local and uh, international institutions and agency. Uh, you can contact us via any social media. We have uh, Instagram via website and Facebook. We also have LinkedIn. So all else, you can email me to Faisal, F-A-I-Z-A-L 586 at um.my or Faisal586 at gmail.com. With that, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salamat. Yeah, maraming salamat, Dr. Faisal. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure a lot of per a lot of our participants would like to collaborate with your association. <laughs> so uh, there you have it. You have Dr. Faisal's email address as well. They're very open for collaboration. So um, thank you again, Dr. Faisal. And uh, thank you also to all our wonderful speakers. And before we have our open forum, may I remind once again our participants to key in your questions in the chat box and comment section using the format name of the speaker and then your question. Okay, so the questions will be consolidated by the other members of the organizing committee to facilitate easier retrieval of queries during the open forum. So likewise, you may also use the raise hand functionality of Zoom and you shall be acknowledged accordingly. Okay, so before our open forum, we will have a presentation from one of our gold sponsors, Live Tech Source Philippines Incorporated. So let's watch it. Okay, thank you again to Live Tech Source Philippines, our gold sponsor. And now let us have our open forum. May I request all our plenary speakers to please turn on your video so that our participants can see you. So may I call in again, Ma'am Emma Ray, Juan Masli, Juan Masli, I'll just call you Masli, okay? <laughs> Lucila Raquino and Dr. Faisal. 
All right. So let me, are you all ready? We have a few questions here. So um, is Mom Emery here already? Yeah, and Mom Lucila as well. So there is Mom Emery. Hi, ma'am. Hello. <laughs> Hello there. And also, Miss Lucila Rakino. Okay, are you here? Okay, there. Mom Lucila, your, your picture is rotated to the right. So I think you have to fix it. <laughs> okay, it's the other way around, Mom Lucila. Okay, so um, we have here the first question. The first question is for Mom Emma Ray. Okay, so Mom Emma, here is a question from an anonymous participant. <laughs> Should the ASEAN MRA, Mutual Recognition Agreement, for librarians, for example, it uh, take into effect already, what would be PLY's course of action to address the possible decrease of Filipino professional librarians who would like to work in the Philippines? Who would like to uh, decrease of Filipino librarians? Who... Oh, yes, ma'am. I think uh, what the, the participant meant is the if there is already a mutual recognition agreement, some of the Filipino librarians would work abroad and mm -hmm. there would be a possible decrease of Filipino librarians working in the Philippines. So um, she's asking or he is asking what would be Ply's course of action? <laughs> so that's a bit difficult. <laughs> A bit difficult, but uh, for that case, uh, we should all we should always see that as a positive, uh, positive things that will happen to us librarians, like uh, Filipino librarians working abroad. But uh, maybe we can increase our or we can invite uh, Asian librarians to work in the Philippines. On the other hand, like uh, making the situation in the Philippines uh, favorable for foreign librarians to to come to us also. Like we, maybe the challenge for Ply and uh, uh, PRC is to level level up the opportunities, the opportunities and the, maybe the benefits that we can offer uh the librarian so we will not lose many right right so but, probably uh, really to campaign for more librarians to take up lis mm -hmm. right for more people to take up library and information science and i think it would also be a challenge probably some of the filipino librarians would go abroad looking for better salary <laughs> So I think we should also um, improve our librarian salary here in the Philippines so as not to go to other countries. But yes, yeah, so like what Mom Emma said, you will take it as an opportunity, as a challenge actually to, to improve our profession. Okay, thank you so much to our anonymous participant who asked this. And now our next question is for Masli. Hi, Masli. There. So again, anonymous participant, Masli. And um, this person said that uh, provided that I share some common goals with Aplin, may I still join you even if I work in an academic or school library? I think this person, Masli, is uh, interested to join Aplin, but uh, this person also works in an academic library. But this person shares the same goals as Aplin. Would you accept her or him? <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for that questions. Actually, this is a good questions. Mm -hmm. um, the Aplin open for um, general members. Okay. So the general members is not the, the librarians who works in the public no libraries, mm -hmm. but it can work with other institutions. So the short answer is yes, you can be members to Aplin. Yes. But as a general members. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So to our participants, you can still join Applin even if you are not working as a public librarian, but you can be a member of Applin as a general member. So who probably we can post your uh, or the contacts of Applin if they want to apply. Right, Masli? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we'll do that. 
Okay, thank you so much, Masli. And then um, our next question is for Ma'am Lucila Raquino. Okay, um, ma'am, how does the association, the Alps, support the emotional well-being or the well the, the state of its members? Mm -hmm. I think it's a good question to all of the associations <laughs> because yes. all of us are experiencing emotional problems, mental health concerns. So particularly, probably I'll call the other uh, members of the panel to answer this question. Mm -hmm. How does the association support the emotional well-being or the mental state of its members? Yeah, I, I'll go first, no? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Go ahead, please. Uh, actually, we, we, we thought of uh, the, the, the Quezon City Public Library, particularly, conducted a, a, a webinar on how to manage your, your stress to help also the librarians who are... Uh, who are on the state of anxiety or depression. Mm -hmm. Very, it's very uh, depressing also to know that some of our public librarians mm -hmm. are, are experiencing some uh, anxieties. And so through webinars, maybe we can help them how to cope with these anxieties and depression. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so ma'am, you had a very a good number of participants when you conducted that webinar on mental health problems. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we we reached uh, almost two thousand participants. Wow. Mm. Yes. So that's a lot, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> so uh, you can conduct this often, also for yeah. in the participants. Why? We have a part two. With I see. I see, and not all the participants are public librarians, so this are. There are different librarians from the yes. different types of libraries. Yes. Okay. Yes. So since this is a good question to all our speakers, so same question. Um, maybe uh, Dr. Faisal, how do you address or help the mental health problems or concerns of your uh, members? All right. Uh, we do have uh, activities uh, on uh, bibliography. Okay. okay. So we promote bibliotherapy among our users, among our librarians, and we uh, conduct a series of webinar whereby they have that uh, they can engage with us, so they don't feel cramped working in uh, working in home. Okay. So that's how we uh, have uh, we respond to its um, uh, mental health issue among librarians. Okay. okay. Webinars then bibliotherapy from the yeah. Malaysian Association. Yeah. Okay, that's good. How about uh, Mom Emma for <laughs> the Philippine Librarians Association? Um, for the Philippine Librarians Association, first of all, uh, in 2020, so that our members will not worry about paying their annual dues, uh, we waive the payment of annual dues and we set up a play relief funds for for some members, but of course our funds are not enough. Mm -mm. Right. And, uh, maybe you will remember that I, I was talking about uh, well, about 10 associations, 7 to 10 associations uh, discussing about technical aspect of the of libraries. Uh, I suggested that we hold a webinar on how to do something like craft craft or yeah. uh, Raya, you remember that even how to do your makeup we want to <laughs> have a webinar on that uh, how to organize your photograph that is one of our because you're always at home you organize your file etc uh, such things so that uh, the light the light webinars uh, for personal uh, consumption of members not that our professional consumption right but uh, in the Philippines we have so many uh, organizations uh, holding webinars on health we have the malap and we have the uh, apps right so uh, we we just let those uh, associations uh, take care of those uh, concerns. Right. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Remember, is it also waived, ma'am, the membership fee of Ply for this year? Is it also waived or just last year? 
our our discussion was uh, because some librarians have their jobs right uh, some lost their jobs so uh, it will depend on the regional councils to pinpoint those librarians who lost their jobs and who can who will have difficulty in paying their annual dues one region i think the southern tagalog waived uh, their annual their annual dues annual dues the, the portion the half of the annual dues but uh, at the national we cannot just afford another wave of uh, waving of the collection because uh, even with pandemic we have some financial obligations like uh, financial obligations with the government like paying our taxes paying for an accountant paying for an an auditor etc so uh, we will waive uh, annual dues for those uh, who lost their job and it should be um, recommended by the regional councils Okay, so there oh, you have it for the PLY members here. Maybe you're asking about you know the 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 annual fees to be paid. So your regional council will take care of that. They're going to deliberate on it. So just uh, wait for further announcements. And I yes, ma'am, I remember you know having light light webinars, <laughs> light discussion. You know how to take care of ourselves during this time. So um yes, uh, Masli. Were you able to? I know that Applin is a very new association, so but probably you have activities or programs in the pipeline to help the mental state of your members. Yeah, to me, a healthy organization or a healthy association mm -hmm. must be comprised of a healthy uh, members, spiritually, morally, and mm -hmm. mentally. Yes. So the 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 well being of the members is very important. It gives me a it gives me the idea of uh, a print should go for something like uh, a programs to support this kind this kind of things to to our members. So currently we have thirty one members, right? Oh, um, based on the numbers of innovators that we have in the first uh, in early ASEAN convening. So mm -hmm. that will be our focus. Okay, so thank you, Masli. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have another question. Questions are coming in now. Okay, so we have a question for Dr. Faisal. This is from Gemma Jereza or Hereza. Um, she said the English department of our school came out with e-library as a response to the challenges brought about by the pandemic. Can you accommodate a newly established library like ours to collaborate with you? And probably what are the possible programs and activities for a school library if they want to collaborate with the Malaysian Library Foundation, the Malaysian right. Library Association? Okay, so we do have a, a school library committee that you can contact or you can contact via me also. So there is lots of potential collaboration that we can do together, especially for mm -hmm. school library. I would like to stress on the information literacy module for school library. I believe not much country have a standard information literacy module for their school library. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is no uh, new in, uh, in setting in the university for adult uh, in terms of uh, information literacy. But for school library, not much of a standard that we can refer, that we can follow, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, feel free to email me. I will, we will respond to you. We will direct you to the person in charge, uh, which is Date Nomadia and Dr. Maya. So yeah, feel free to email me. Okay, thank you, Dr. Faisal. And here's another question for you, actually, from Hiranyan Ravin Chandran. Okay, uh, hello, I am a school librarian and a high school student. What is your view on schools having school librarian boards with having students as the librarians? All right. When we talk about a uh, school librarian setting, eh, the setting is very small. Mm -hmm. So it's for me, I don't see any problem at all. However, the terms of the words librarian should the, per, the person with librarian, uh, the title with librarian should have a certain certificate actually. But mm -hmm. then it's a good exposure, it's a good uh, learning uh, platform for them to be a librarian in future. 
Okay, so in Malaysia context, most of the school library resource are handled by teacher. Okay, and they have helper among the students. Mm. So it's depend on the objective of the school itself. So, but then to respond to this question, I don't see any problem at all. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Faisal. I hope uh, the one who answered that question, Hiran Yan, able to hear that. Okay, and um, this question is for all our speakers, to all our speakers. Um, what are your thoughts? I think this is just your personal thoughts because it's hard to um, speak on behalf of your association. But to all the speakers, what are your thoughts on the exchange of librarians in ASEAN countries, like the mutual recognition agreement. Now, what, your thought, what are your thoughts about it? Would it be possible? Just your thoughts. I know it's, uh, we don't want to put you on the spot because <laughs> you're representing the association, but probably your personal opinions about it. Okay, I uh, would like to go first. <laughs> it's, um... Okay, Ma'am Emma, yes. I mentioned in my talk that uh, we are there is an ongoing uh, talks about I among ASEAN librarians uh, moving towards MRA or exchange librarians. Um, in our in our experience going to some ASEAN countries, we know that there are uneven development like some countries do not have uh, the degree but some have phd degree etc um, it would help asian countries if we have something like exchange of uh, librarians in exchange of lis students no i i think there's i've been to the national library of the philippines pre-lockdown and uh, there are Indonesian students who who work with them because uh, they want to experience uh, librarianship outside Indonesia so uh, they work at the National Library of the Philippines so an exchange of students and professionals uh, can help us uh, more or less level up our opportunities and thank you so much ma'am emma okay um dr faisal your thoughts about it all right uh, again i <laughs> i don't see any problem at all to have uh, others librarians to work in malaysia or mm -hmm. Liberian, uh, malaysian librarian to work in other part of asia because well there is pro, pro and cons. Uh, yeah, obviously there is pro and cons. Mm -hmm. But having a different, cu different culture, different setting of the librarian into your setting might benefit your organization also. You might have uh, new ways on dealing with new uh, information things, you know, information needs. And then you might, the, the person itself might have different experience that really need by your organization, especially on the new trends, the new ITs, you know, uh, IT or system in library. So please support MRA. And we are looking forward, uh, better collaboration, better um, exchange of information, knowledge, and IT technologies transfer among Asians so that we will improve our professions. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Faisal. How about you, Masli? Your thoughts about it? Exchange um, of librarians in ASEAN countries. Yeah. So the this mechanism is like it's like a vehicle to uplift. Mm. So this yeah. is what I can see. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're good. Yeah, you're yeah. okay. <laughs> Are you okay yes. with it? Right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh Mom Lucila, maybe you would like to share your thoughts also about the Mutual recognition agreement. Yes, I think it's possible, no? Because uh, like that, uh, what Mom uh, Emma Ray said, na exchange of uh, students from other ASEAN countries, they want to, we, we accepted accepted them and the Kesson City Public Library. So mm -hmm. these are our best practices. And they also shared 
best practices of their uh, institution or their mm-hmm. so it's possible why not it's very okay. likely Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ma'am Lucila. And then we have last two questions here. The second to the last question is for Ma'am Emma Ray. <laughs> Ma'am, for those non-licensed librarians, can they sit in any position or as officer of apply? <laughs> Since we would like to extend our services or willingness to participate in the organization. Non-licensed librarians, ma'am, can they be an officer of the association? <laughs> because Fly is uh, an association of licensed librarians, right? But there are other uh, library associations in the Philippines that non-licensed librarians can join. Uh, they can serve associations even they don't have the license. Uh, for example, if they're working, for example, in the Philippine group of law librarians, not all of our librarians have license. We try as much as possible to to convince them to get their license, but uh, the, in our association, a license is not required. But for Ply, a license is really required. Okay, thank you so much, Ma'am Emery. And for... Okay, there are still questions coming in. <laughs> I thought that's the last. <laughs> okay, but we, we don't have time anymore. Probably what we can do is uh, we can gather all the questions and email the questions to the concerned speaker so that you may answer them. And um, we will email them to the participants. So these are the questions asked during the plenary. Okay, uh, maybe one last question in order of you know how this is the first questions that were posted okay ma'am lucila can we register online to your association register online probably join now what are their requirements even if they're not a public librarian no uh one of our requirements that uh the librarian or even para professions can be a member provided that they are working in a public library or a government uh agency so that's one of the requirements Okay. All right. All right. Okay. I follow up, Mom. They can uh, be a member or they can apply for membership. Actually, mm-hmm. they can email us, and uh, we will we will uh, receive their names and mm-hmm. be members. Even though there's no uh, members membership fee yet, <laughs> but they can <laughs> send their membership fee via Gmail okay. or Gcas. I mean. All right. Okay. So um, thank you so much to all our plenary speakers. So we have like a few questions that we're not able to answer live, but then we'll just, uh, the organizing committee will just email you the questions so that you can answer them accordingly. And at this point, uh, we would like to award our certificate of appreciation to all of you. Okay, the certificate reads the National Library of the Philippines in partnership with ASEAN Public Libraries and Information Network and in collaboration with Philippine Librarians Association Incorporated, Librarians Association of Malaysia and the Asia Foundation present this certificate of appreciation to Emma M. Ray, Juan Maslibin Juan Razali, Lucila Rakino, and Maud Faisal Hamza for being our resource speakers in the first ASEAN Virtual Regional Conference of Public Librarians with the theme, ASEAN Libraries, Arts and Culture, Inspire, Innovate, and Collaborate, held on August 23 to 25, 2021, given this 23rd day of August 2021 via Zoom, signed by the Director of the National Library of the Philippines, Cesar Gilbert Q. Adriano, and the President of Aplin Juan Masli Binwan Razali. So we are giving you virtually your certificate of appreciation. Thank you so much to all of you. Thank you so much. Uh, Mom Emery, Juan Masli Bin Juan Rosali, Lucila Rakino, and Maud Faisal Hamza. Thank, Thank you, you so Adrian. much once again. Thank you. Okay, and that concludes day one of the first ASEAN Virtual Regional Conference of Public Librarians. Thank you, thank you all. But before we formally close this first day of the conference, please do not forget to answer the evaluation questions for this event. 
The link will be posted in our chat box. We have two evaluation forms, one from the National Library of the Philippines and the other one from NCCA. Okay, day 2 a.m. tomorrow. Attendance, you know, uh, signing of attendance sheet starts at 8.30 a.m. So we will start at exactly 9 a.m. tomorrow. There will be a raffle. Okay, this is what you like. I know you like this. <laughs> there will be a raffle for participants from sponsors during the closing ceremonies. For participants to qualify, you need to answer or to fill in or write your names on the attendance sheet. Okay? So don't forget that for you to qualify for the raffle given by our sponsors. Okay, so thank you so much to all of you who have joined us today. See you all tomorrow for day two of our conference. Once again, this is Rerwena Apolinario, your host and moderator. See you again tomorrow. Stay safe, take care, and bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.